one hand. Today we are talking about electricity. One of the most underrated, appreciated things in the world today. Yeah, electricity. Back in the day, electricity was kind of like a form of magic, dude. We didn't have it. We didn't have it for a long time. And then people would notice the static electricity and the lightning. Um, they were basically close to the same and that we could go ahead and produce it with magnetic coils. And it led to all kinds of things that changed and made our modern conveniences that we have today. I mean, have you ever been in a blackout before? It's crazy, everything's dark. You might have to eat ice cream because it's gonna melt. Or eat a steak, those are delicious too. When that happens and you're in a blackout and you go to turn on the lights and you're like, oh, it's dark in here, I'll turn on the... Oh, wait, I can't, I can't turn on the lights. And then you turn, you, you try to turn it on, and then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so foolish. It doesn't work at all right now. Those modern conveniences are brought by the loads of different ways in which, you know, we generate power. Today, we do those by fossil burning systems. They use, uh, you know, fossils, fossilized uh, fuels, such as in, you know, dead dinosaurs and crusty old plants. Uh, these are coal, oil, and natural gas. Yes! There's also biomass too. That is more recent things that haven't crustified quite as much as the old stuff. We also do it with solar, and solar is different. There's crystal structures which actually harness the power of the sun! The crystal structures of the solar panel, they absorb the light and that turns into electricity. And then we put it into a battery! Batteries! Batteries are magical things! We store it in there due to chemistry. Chemistry allows us to go ahead and put a charge inside a battery and that holds it and we use it later. We also have wind power. When we have a turbine over there and it goes and then it, it turns an electric motor and that causes power generation. We store that also in batteries. We do it with nuclear power plants. That one is steam operated. We generate the steam by using uranium that gets all excited and causes fission and then warms up the water. And that also turns out an electric motor. And then there's geothermal power. That's when we harness the power of the earth. You know, the, the flames from below, all the heat down there. Hot place. Burning. And we use it to, you know, nuke some water, turn it to steam, and also do a power generation through a turbine. And store it off again if we need to. And there's wave power, wave power. When now the surfers are out there going doo -doo 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 -doo, and they're out there surfing on the waves. And instead of surfing the waves, this thing surfs and it moves back and forth and then it creates electricity because of the wave movements. So, what do we understand about electricity? Well, we use different ways to represent how we understand it. We use voltage and we use current and we use resistance. And those are the things that help us understand how it works in our natural world and how we use it in electronics and we build things in circuits and such. This is done because of our understanding of how power is generated and how we can use it. That this is one of those things that, you know, is a little bit hand wavy, but uh, we just kind of go with it, dude. This, this is voltage. Voltage is the kind of potential difference between, uh, say like a high and a low. That's an easy way to think about it. So voltage is what we get to describe the difference in levels, amps, which is this other one here, that one tells us about the amount of push that we can have. We're talking about the flow, the amount of oomph, uh, whether we get a small cheeseburger or a big cheeseburger. I like the big cheeseburgers best. And resistance is like that bad shopping cart that you seem to always get. The one that has the bum wheel on it that makes it go slower than all the rest. Okay, so let's do it this way. Ready? Ohm's law. It is this thing right here. V equals IR. Some people, they're like, oh, Ned, I don't really care about Ohm's Law, but uh, can you tell me where my book face or my Instacards or just tell me when my pizza will be ready? And, you know, I respect that, but Ohm's Law is important for all of those things. Imagine it like this. Imagine there is this wall of water, this wall of water right here, and there is a hole punctured in it, like, poop. And the voltage, that one, that one is the height of the water. Ooh, I'm up here now. Hand, down a little bit. Okay. And this height down here, the difference, the difference is the voltage, the voltage potential as it's called, the size of the hole. That is the resistance that is resisting more. If the hole is small, it is more resistance. If the hole is big, 
Less resistance because the water, the current, can come through the hole faster. So there's less resistance with a big hole, more resistance if it is a small hole. The current is the amount of the water that comes through that hole over time. It comes through and comes through and comes through and through and through. I'm getting dizzy now. Think of it as you talk about, you know, the current of a river. Yes, the same kind. Yes, I know. Yes. You get water through a hole and it is similar to electricity through a wire. We get this flow of electricity. So that happens on all the things that we are talking about through wires and even through air. In order for air to conduct electricity, it needs to be dry. If you have humidified air, meaning water in the air, it is a lot harder to, to cause static electricity because the electrons, yes, the air has electrons that flow, flow, like that current that we talked about before. You need to ionize the air. That means that there is a, a charge differential. Like a bubble in the air, you get superheated air. You plasma the air. Plasma is like crazy hot, dude. But it is only for such a short time, it doesn't even seem to matter. And that superheated time is when that bubble is going and going and going, and then the bubble pops. That is, that is the shock noise. That's what you hear. That is the noise. And it allows that charge to flow through the air from molecule, boink, to molecule, boink. What happens is when they get all charged up in one spot, and then they come closer, and there's a differential, that voltage differential, then it goes, and zaps just like that. But that is how sometimes when you are sitting there with a balloon and you rub it on your hair and then your hair stands on end and then you're like, oh, I look like a crazy person. That is another way in which we build a static charge. The electrons get stripped off the balloon surface and then your hair is all sitting there ready to be zapped it back. Another one is say when you're sitting in a chair and you're like, oh, I need to get out of this chair. And so you get up out of the chair, but it is dry, not very humid. There, there is a rubbing action, that rubbing action that creates that separation of electrons. And then they want to balance and then they go, you know, like we did before. Look, look at me, my ears, they are sometimes balanced, sometimes not, but they want to be balanced. Yes, that, that one is, oh, yes, yes, like that. They're balanced now. I am balanced, balanced, whoop. So, static electricity, it is crazy. It is 20,000 volts. That is thousands, not, not, not hundreds, thousands. It is a lot. However, it is the current. Remember how we talked about the water? The water going through things? It is the same here. A little hole like coming through a straw, it'll hit me in the face, it'll be like, oh, that is nice and refreshing, but that's not doing much, man. And so because of that, static electricity shocks. It does not hurt or damage because it does not have enough flow to cause damage. While static electricity, it is kind of crazy. <laughs> Lightning is way crazy, dude. I mean, come on. It is 3 million volts. That is crazy. And the thing about lightning is lightning actually does carry quite a bit of amps. 30,000 amps. Like we were showing before, the wall of water, you know, open it up to like a big floodgate and I'm like, Pah! And I go flying down river. And that's the same thing, like, you get hit with that much current, that's gonna sting. That line leave a mark, too. One of those grisly, old-looking, gnarly things that you're like, oh man, that dude's seen some stuff. And so with 3 million volts, with a lot of push, and a lot of amps, that sucker's gonna do stuff. It has such power, it rocks the world. You do not want to get struck by that, dude. <laughs> oh, yes, so, yes. So that is static electricity and uh, lightning. They go pow, but at different capacities. Because again, current matters. Flow, flow. I feel like rowing a boat down a river. You know, you're sitting there, you're like, mush, mush, keep the flow going. We don't need no resistance of them rocks and stuff. Get this sucker downstream. But we talked about lightning. We talked about static electricity. There's the other factor too. It is used in all kinds of other things. And we use it to power all kinds of things. So many things that are useful in today. We use it to uh, power a microwave, to power stove tops, your vacuum, the thing that sucks, pulls the dirt out of the things and uh, leaves out of the crumb parts. It makes lots of loud noise and makes your cats all like, oh, it's coming. And we use it for light bulbs too. Lots of light bulbs. It is in the house, it is in the car, it is in your phone, it is in the tablet, it is in and 
for our remotes. They flipped on the TV. The TV! Yes, I spend too much time in front of it. And apparently you do too. And gaming consoles where you can fly around and do things. Oh, or HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. You know, makes it cool inside when it is hot outside or hot inside when it is cool outside. We are crazy people, you know that? Why don't we just go outside? Electric bikes, so electric blankets even. I mean, come on. Your socks when they're wool and you're rubbing across the uh, carpet and then suddenly it goes and then you get zapped. Or you zap other people, like your brother or sister. Sometimes it is fun, sometimes it is not. And you know, it's been great. We talked about power generation plants, static electricity, the frightening of lightning, how we use things somewhat too. Keep your minds open and your ears too. Go and learn things. It's good for you. Bye. Oh, my face. Open it up to like, you know, a big floodgate. And I'm like, Whoa! 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 oh, yep. And so, you know, so I'm not a very good public speaker right now. Let me try that again. The resistance is like, you know, when mom's like, hey, you had too much candy. You can't have that much candy. And you're like, I want more candy today. I want it all. Fix my face. Hair and makeup did terrible today. Okay, there. My schnoz is kind of... Okay, there we go. That is better. Where's my Instacart and my book face and uh, my hot pot? <laughs> Did it... Uh... Wait, am I here? Oh, I'm here. Oh, dang it. I need to try that again.